Sup, BJ here. Welcome back to another video. Now, um, oh, hang on, guys. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to um tell you how to avoid awkward silences. Now, everyone gets into an awkward silence one time or another. So, I was gonna, I was thinking, maybe I should help you guys out with that. So, the first one is. Learn some basic eye break, um, icebreakers. You don't need world class speaking skills to make a good small talk. Just remember, a few small questions can use to fill in the silence. Asking your acquaintance. So, how? So, where are you from? How do you know your? How do you, how do you, how do you know? Then you say your friend's name. If, they, if it's a friendly date, if you have a friend, they might, they might know. Um, uh, what do you do for fun? Catch up with a friend by asking how is your job going, or how is school, school going if they're still in, still in school. How's your family? Did you, or did you, did you do anything fun last weekend? Topics you can ask him, uh, this isn't on here, topics, topics you, you can ask him. Uh, let's see, maybe um, sports or hobby or last night's game that might have been going on. Uh, maybe your co-workers, if you, if, you, if you work, maybe that could be the new, or a new topic to talk, you can talk about. Uh, maybe uh, maybe the news, I don't know if you, if you guys have watched the news, but yeah, the news or local events or books or TV shows, stuff like that. Just make it easy. Think ahead, think of topics ahead of time. Before you go into a social event, think of uh, like your go-to topics to jumpstart a day conversation. This will help you fill in the silences so you aren't scrambling for words in the moment. People who share the interest in sport or a hobby can be the easiest people to talk to. Just uh, just talk about you, what, you, what you find interesting, whether it's the last games. Not last game is not uh, last last night's game, or, some, or stuff like stuff like that. Or talk to your coworkers. Think of a topic that you recognize from work, but that doesn't feel like doing work. Go for something light-hearted, like what do you think of the new lunch place? If they if they have that. Um. Yeah. Recent news, local events, or popular books and TV shows are all good fallback options. Avoid politics in situations where where people are looking for debates. Avoid that. Avoid flat responses. You know what flat responses are. Basically, flat, flat responses are just replying yes or no to a question. Like say um, say uh, hey um, last week was pretty fun. Hey. Yeah, don't say that. Say yeah. Last last night last last weekend was fun. I especially like I especially like the part where then you need to go into whatever your favorite part was. Don't just say flat responses because no, because no one likes that. And your conversation will get very very boring if you keep doing that. Responding with a yes or no answer is sure is a sure way to create awkward silences. See, avoid asking questions with that prompt. A simple answer, yes or no answers. If someone asks you one of these questions, be sure to add it for, to an order of to keep the conversation moving. For example, someone asks you, do you like sports? Don't simply say yes or no. Instead, explain your response and share your personal information. You could say something like, yes, I love to ski. I've been skiing since I was a young child. Some of these favorite, some of my family, favorite family memories are on the slopes. What, what sports do you enjoy? You could you could turn the question back on them if you want. Also, avoid conversation stoppers. Responses that put a period at the end of a conversation. Example: If you're talking about the an amazing conversation, an amusing, a new conversation partner says, "Yes, that was funny." Don't respond with "Ha ha, yeah." Instead, keep the conversation moving. You could say something like, it "Sure was, but it was." Wasn't as funny as that one time. Do you remember we just up as aliens? I didn't do that, so I don't know why they said they would say that. 
take off pressure, to take number four, take off pressure of yourself. If you put a, lot of, a great deal of pressure on yourself to keep the conversation going, that will divert the focus from the actual conversation. Instead, be present and respond to the other person's, what the other person is saying. Be open to allowing the conversation to go into whichever part it takes. When in doubt, take a deep breath and relax. Your prepared topic, topic just, to, just to get the conversation flowing. If you've moved on to a new subject, you, they've, then you've already succeeded. Everyone struggles with awkward silences on occasion, even me. Try not to make a big deal out of it. This will only this will only magnify the problem rather than resolving it. That's true. Now there's two there's two guys talking. This one this 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 guy said, "What's new at your job these days?" Or if they're still in school, he say, "What's new at school these days?" Number five. Share the information. Yeah, share the share the information. If you blur out everything at once, then the conversation probably won't last very long. That's true. I know. I know from experience. The conversation probably will, yeah, yeah. instead insert information about yourself into the conversation and allow time for the other person to contribute as well. This will make your conversation go a lot longer and keep awkward silences at minimum. That means lowest. If you notice that you're talking about your job for a while, take a break and ask the other person what's to do at their job these days. This will allow both people to have an equal contribution in the, in the conversation. Number six, be friendly. This will be uh, yeah, this will put the other person at ease and fluctuate the conversation. Maybe. Oh yeah, no, no. Make sure to smile to and respect the other person with what the other person is saying. Accept them and make them feel more comfortable opening up and talking with you, which will keep the conversation moving. Make sure you know, the other person contribute a good uh, contribute also. A good conversation is everyone's responsibility, not just yours. So to keep, keep the conversation moving, it's everyone else's it's as much as everyone else's responsibility as much as it, as much as it is yours. Validate. What the other person says by repeating part, re repeating part of it. If they told you about their daughter's sickness, for example, I don't have a daughter. At all, you could say, "I'm so sorry that she was feeling that way. That she was feeling that way. The flu is the worst. I remember when my son had. I don't have a son either. This shows that you are listening and you care. Plus, it keeps the conversation moving." Take a graceful exit. Pretty sure you guys know what that is, right? But if you don't, I'll tell you. Any, I'll tell you anyways. Graceful exit is conversations that don't last. Conversations don't last forever. They are, there is no need to be ashamed if you are the one ending it. If you often get sick of the pointless conversation or feel awkward. If, about saying goodbye, think of a few ways to move on and practice using them. Like bumming into an acquaintance in public, like you say hey and then, then the name. You look great, I'm in a rush, but I'll see you later, yeah? Short conversation is via phone or text. Okay, I'm glad we worked that worked out the purpose of the conversation, which is like what what you've what you've already worked out. Talk to you again soon. Long conversation is at a social social event. Wow, I really enjoyed getting to know you, or which is reconnecting. I'm going to go mingle for a bit. What? Okay. Okay. Number eight. Talk about your passions. Passions are things that you enjoy or that you're proud of. If you are enthusiastic and proud about your about what you do, which is this, is what I do. I'm proud of what I'm proud, I'm proud of doing this. Um. This uh, then other people will respond in that same in, in that passion. Talk about your personal achievements and goals that make you unique and give an insight to your personality. For example, if you are in a group of outdoor athletics, you may say something outdoors, say something that involves outdoors, like I was rock climbing this last weekend, and on sided with a 5.9 with no beta, 
that either be interested in asking a question like, what is the 5.9 without beta is? Then you tell them, but I don't know what it is, so... And if you guys don't know what a 5.9 beta is, don't ask it, because if you, it's only if you don't know what it is. If you do know what it is, please ask it by all means. Avoid bragging about your competitive topics or, com or comparing yourself to other people. Focus on your personal goals and how achieving the ma achieving them made you feel. Be tactful about topics that other people can be, can be sensitive about. I mean, like, if some people are sensitive, sensitive about things, don't talk about them because you might make them feel uncomfortable. I don't know that from experience. I know some people have done that, and it doesn't well, end well for them. Don't talk about your great vacation or something who can't or or someone who can't afford one. Don't do that. Or brag about a successful diet to someone who's struggling to lose weight. Don't do that either. If you're not good at celebrating your accomplishments, ask a friend or family member who's proud of you to give you some ideas. That's basically what I do. Okay. Number nine. Tell a story. During a pause, share new information about yourself or a form of an entertaining story. You can say something, you can say something like, The funniest thing happened to me the, the other night. Then share a memorable experience that you had. Maybe you recently were locked out of your house and had to find a way to break in. A good story will engage the other person to take conversations further. And last one, number 10, be confident. If you have something valuable to contribute in any conversation, you have a unique perspective to other people that would love to hear, love, love to hear it. Make sure you are aware of your importance in the conversation to give you, you give yourself permission to convert, convert, uh, permission to contribute the conversation. <sighs> uh, uh, ultimately, a good conversation will let will let uh, let people share themselves with another, with one another. Be yourself and forge real connection and avoid awkwardness. Take a chance to. Share something very meaningful to you. To you, for example, you talk about the the important goal that you have, such as the desire to run a marathon, or even get other people, even the other people that can't relate to it. You will get someone someone better to find out that you, something that you hope to accomplish. That's it for this video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to do next. Please subscribe. Sorry around me. Wherever it is, just click here. Leave a thumbs up. I love you all so much. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, peace.